All right, so we're here at the Spaceport America in New Mexico. The temperatures are reaching 40 degrees, so you might hear us drink some water in between this live stream. I'm here with Oliver, CEO and founder of Auris. Say hi. Hello. So, Oliver, why did you found Auris and what's, what's the idea behind it? I was part of uh, last year's team, combined EPFL and ETH students, which was at the Spaceport already. And it's such a cool thing to be here that I was really fond of doing it again for the next year. And also I really wanted to create something uh, which enables students to live their dreams and build something in a team which you usually don't do. Alright, so you will have to excuse the pun, but it really took off. Um, where do you think it's now and like, are you proud? Yes, I am. I mean, it's a really cool team that we have here together and we, I think we achieved quite a lot. Uh, the last year was really intense. We built up our own team, we have a really cool system and I'm really thrilled to see how good it performs now, what we can learn out of it. Cool. So, um, let's talk about more specifics about the rocket. What can you tell me about the length, the weight? Yeah, so we have a two and a half meter long rocket with a diameter of 15 centimeters. It weighs about 24 kilograms. Um, we have uh, own built structures and electronics in there, but we do use a commercial motor for this year. Cool. Um, now, the, the rocket has uh, gotten quite some attention um, when it comes to the manufacturing. It has some very interesting elements to it. Yes, exactly. So we really built all of our structures on our own. Uh, we have a carbon, fiber outer, a carbon fiber outer shell, we have a glass fiber nose cone, really nice aluminum parts in between. And I think a bit of speciality of the whole rocket is uh, the air brakes, uh, a mechanism that tries to or that increases the drag during ascent, uh, descent, no, ascent, and helps us to really reach the target apogee of 10,000 feet as accurately as possible. So there were a lot of positive feedback around the exhibition when we showed the, the um, air brakes. Did you expect that or was it surprising? It was a bit surprising for us because we thought really we like the first year here we, we, we didn't build rockets really before. And I mean air brakes are a bit a critical system. We don't really know, uh, we didn't know how we, do it, how we should do it. Even now we have this like critical aspects in it and we really have to see, we're really looking forward how it performs and how we can improve it in the, for the next year as well. Cool. So I think uh, the nose cone also got some jealous looks. Um, how was it built? Yeah, so the nose cones, there was, were uh, two students which mainly put a lot of effort in it to really manufacture, manufacture it on their own. Um, it was, they used uh, glass fiber pre preg and made a really nice nose cone out of it in the autoclave. Several night shifts on it, um, painted it nicely, a lot of features in it to, to enable also interaction with, with the engineer on the pad and so on. So really interesting piece. Cool. Um, now we are still waiting for the security check and for the red flag where the a rocket will launch. Um, now in general, when you look back at the project, are there like things that you might improve or that you're really proud of? Oh yeah, there's a lot of things. So it was really very intense year. Um, we started off in September with the idea. In October we kicked off with the team. Um, we did a huge transformation as the whole team and I think we're still transforming quite a lot. Um, it's, for us, it's. I think there's a lot of challenges. Of course, we have technical challenges, but also we have like a lot of organizational channel challenges and challenges as a team. How do you work together? Everybody's a bit special. Um, a lot of people with a lot of knowledge, and how do you bring them together that they can really perform as a whole? Yeah, that that was a bit the challenge. And on the other hand, it's also really nice to see if people start working together. And you see, like, just two people. They basically they create systems you could never believe of. So that's really beautiful to see. So talking about the team, it's about um, 50 members, right? Exactly, yeah. So uh, how, how does it work to manage such a big team? What are your secrets? My secrets? <laughs> I'm relying a lot on the team in the end. Um, 
it was really hard in the beginning to set something up and you drive it a bit and then try to give it over, hand it over to the team. But I think we start working on that and we really start performing on that. That uh, everybody finds a bit his spot and knows how to work together. So the biggest challenge we really had there is to coordinate each other. It's a, a lot of people. Um, they don't sometimes don't see each other every week or every day, and this was really one of the main challenges. So to talk together, such that everybody knows what the other is doing. So control the interfaces, be it on the technical side, but also on the uh, organizational side. So a big team that works nice together is like one basis to build a rocket, but like you still need sponsors. Can you tell us like um, which sponsors are involved and how they helped us? Yeah, so we had some key key partners which supported us from the very beginning, uh, to mention Ruach Space here. Um, also ETH Zurich, which opened quite a lot of doors to us. We had access to the infrastructure that we needed. Uh, here also a special thank to uh, Professor Mani and the Siemens Lab to really providing us the, the autoclave and the infrastructure we needed to build this really beautiful structure. Yeah, and then on the other side, really, our, our goal was really to collaborate with industries, also to sh really pave the way for the students how industry works, really to, to, to show that they can interact with them and really also have fun in that. Yeah, so it was really this mixture of industry and, and uh, school sponsors in the end. And then we also got uh, quite a lot of kick from uh, private people, which really helped us to, uh, to achieve the goal we have here. So, circling back to the air brakes, uh, we had some really interesting uh, support from Sauber. Can you tell us how this came to be and how they supported us? Yes, this was a very interesting story. So, at uh, some point in time, we needed a, a wind tunnel because we realized, okay, we have these air brakes, we don't really know what's the influence of them on the rocket. Um, so we were searching within Switzerland and eventually ended up at Sauber and they were really interested to, 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 to support us here together with uh, our brother team from Lausanne, the EPFL rocket team. Um, this was really amazing, so Sauber eventually became one of our main partners now for this project to really test our, our system or validate some of, of our simulations and the systems we built. Cool. So. Um when you look into the future, into the crystal ball, what do you see like in the next one year, two years, five years? I think whatever happens, I think we, we learned so much in this year. Really a lot about how we organize ourselves, how we can improve technically. Um, and I believe that we can even be better in the future, that we really, really, really try hard to transfer all the knowledge that we gain to the next team and establish in the back something really Aris as an association bringing together students with a fascination for space but also students that just want to engage in a team and work on a real project. This is really our goal. Is a hybrid motor for you on the horizon like as a possibility? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I think if you look at the industry today a lot goes in direction of liquid motors when it comes to chemical propulsion. So it, it is an interesting way to go over hybrid to liquid and so on to really increase a bit the, the, the challenge on the technical side as well but also the performance and flexibility of such systems to really create something exceptional which can really also be used for a rocket or whatever we may be able to build in future. So our rocket has just been announced and we're waiting for the countdown. Our team is super thrilled here. Yeah, time to lift off. Yeah, looking good. How nervous are you on a scale Super of 1 nervous. to 10? 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lift. Nice. Yes. Ooh. Holy shit. shit.
Motor overpressurized. What? Was it because it huh? was too long on the... No idea. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, so what else? Oh my god. Holy shit, yeah. Oof. Yeah, our rocket blew up. Dead. Um, so, the first thing we heard is that the motor uh, was overpressurized, so our rocket made it approximately 300 meters. Um, it was a commercial motor, it will be interesting to find out what the problem was. Do you think it might have uh, anything to do with the long waiting time? Or oh, there's a lot of things that could influence that, we really have to investigate that. Um, I mean, we had telemetry, we had connection to the rocket. So we can like gather some data and yes. find out what happens? We have to, I mean, we have mm. to find It's going to be hard, because it seems to be split quite a lot all over, but we'll see. So now the team is driving out, getting the different pieces? Yes, yeah, so we have to wait until the whole, uh, the complete salvo is over of the other teams. And then, yeah, then we have to see what we find and make the best out of it. All right. Cool. Yeah, so we have to look. Holy shit.